a Romanian unicorn gymnast. <laughs> so I remember. So uh, when I was in my late 20s, which was a long time ago, I, uh, I was in graduate school getting my master's in education and certification to teach high school English. And as part of that, I had to do a semester of student teaching. How many people have done student teaching? A whole bunch of people. <laughs> Uh, so my first couple of weeks of student teaching, I just uh, sat and observed and learned kids' names. But eventually I had to take over the classroom. And the day before I did, the teacher, the supervising teacher, uh, assigned the class a paper and a speech. And so on my first day taking over the class, I had to go around the room and find out the topics for these papers and speeches. So I found out that this girl over here was going to write a paper on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she was also going to demonstrate make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And uh, this gentleman over here was going to do a paper on how to take a shower properly and somehow demonstrate that in the classroom. <laughs> so, so I went around the room, 35 kids, and I got to the 30th kid in the back corner, Eric Valdez. And Eric hadn't been in the class very much. And I said, Eric, what's the topic for your paper? And he said, I said, okay, well, you know, there's also a speech component, Eric. What's the topic for your speech? And he said, I don't do speeches. I said, okay, well, that's interesting, Eric. I'm just curious if I can ask, what do you do? And he said, I do worksheets. <laughs> And at, and at this point, I think a lot of teachers would just be going, God, you know, this kid just does the bare minimum to get by. And me, I was going, wow, this kid just does the bare minimum to get by. He has seen through this bullshit of worksheets, and he could just do those and not get thrown out of class, right? See, I had been a straight A student growing up. I was the salutatorian, so not quite the valedictorian, but, you know, step below. Um, but I always admired these kids who were like, I felt like a little bit smarter than me and a little more confident than me and who just didn't want to play the game. So I liked Eric. So I went past Eric and I went on to the rest of the kids. And I found out later from the assistant principal that Eric hardly ever went to class. But he started showing up to my class every single day. And he sat in the front row. And he asked questions. And he engaged in discussion in the classroom. But when it came to doing homework, Forget it. Like, he was not going to do it. Anything that happened outside the classroom, he'd take a big fat zero. He did not care. So one day I said, hey, Eric, man, you know, you're 18 years old. You're in a sophomore English class with 15 and 16 year olds. Don't you want to just do some work so you can get out of here? And he said, no, man. I like school. <laughs> and he said, school is easy. <laughs> So I tried to find out a little bit more about Eric. Uh, it turned out Eric uh, liked to write raps. And this does not become like a Dangerous Minds Michelle Pfeiffer kind of story at this point. <laughs> because his rhymes were freaking awful. <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> but the other thing that Eric did was he had a job at night. So Eric would come to school during the day and somehow pass the time. He would go home, have a meal with his mom, and then he would go to his job at night where he was a security guard at a Dillard's department store. And this was where all of his energy and focus actually went. And one day Eric came to me and he said, hey, Mr. Isle, can I ask you some advice? Sure, I would love that, right? He said, he said you know, I'm going to work as a nice security guard and uh, you know, the Dillard stores are changing their security systems all around the country and they've asked me if I want to help. Uh, they're going to fly me out to the corporate headquarters and train me and then I get to fly around to all the stores and install the systems and train employees on how to use them. I said, wow, Eric, this is freaking fantastic. What a great opportunity for you. I loved the fact that Dillard's had seen that he was smart and engaged also. Uh, he said, yeah, man, you know, the only thing is, uh, you know, I can't really do that and go to school. <laughs> That's kind of a full-time job. What do you think I should do? I said, I said, you are wasting your time. And 
other people's time in school right now. It's clearly not important to you. Get out of your mom's freaking basement. Go out into the world and do something. And maybe you'll figure out what's important to you. And you can always go back and get your GED or whatever, but you know, now's the time to figure out what's important. So I went and told my supervising teacher this, uh, about this conversation, and uh, she said, wow, you know, Eric is really hard to reach. It's so cool that he trusted you, you know? And it sounds like you probably gave him the best advice, but uh, do me a favor. Don't tell anyone that you advised a student to drop out of school. <laughs> And this was honestly the last straw between me and traditional public education. <laughs> See, I had seen a bunch of kids like Eric, kids who were smart and interesting and engaged, and the system wasn't serving them at all. It was serving the straight A kids like me just fine, but it wasn't serving Eric and didn't seem to care. And so I went on and finished my student teaching. Eric dropped out. Uh, I went on and finished my master's in education, and then I dropped out of education as well.